Today we're going to do some basic angle beam calibrations for shear wave weld inspection. Let's get started. Before we get started, I'd like to say I'm really happy to be part of the Rock the Trades initiative. Now this is to bring awareness of skilled trades as a rewarding career path. I know if I could go back in time, I would definitely tell my younger self to get your NDT ticket sooner. For equipment, I'm going to use my Sonatest Wave flaw detector, even wore the shirt today. I'm going to have a 5 megahertz half inch transducer on a 70 degree wedge. And I've also got an IAW block. Now this is an IAW type 2. It has two reflectors here at 2 inch and 4 inch or 50 and 100 millimeters. You may have one of the other ones that has perhaps a 4 and a 9 inch or a 4 and an 8 inch reflector. That's fine. You can use any one of those. The first calibrations we need to do are a beam index point and a time base calibration. I'm going to start with the beam index point. This measures the position on the wedge where the sound comes out. We need to know this so that we can position our flaws properly. So what you're going to do is put it down on your IIW block and hit one of these radii. Now in this case, I've got both of them on screen. All we're gonna do is move the probe back and forth until we peak the signal. And then you're gonna take this line here on the block. This represents, this point right here is actually the center of the circle. So then you're gonna take a line and position your pencil right there. And that's actually gonna be the beam index point. For time-based calibration, this is velocity and wedge delay. Now velocity, we really shouldn't have to calibrate for velocity. The nominal value should be good enough. The values will change between your calibration block and your test piece by one or two points anyways. The wedge delay though, that's really important because that is a measure of how much time the sound spends within the wedge. We don't care. We want to get rid of that, take that out of the equation and start measuring from the surface of the steel. I'm going to use the auto cal feature on the wave. Now, just like we did for the beam index point, I'm going to peak the first radius. That's like this. Remember, there's a radius on the back side here that's 50 millimeters and then another one that's 100. So we're going to position that in the right spot and hit auto cal. And our distances, this is 50 millimeters and 100. So that's what I've entered here and here. And then we're going to basically position this over the first one and hit add point. And you can see it displays 50 millimeters. We'll move this over the second one. It's a little bit saturated at the top, not such a huge deal. Still 128% we're okay. Hit add point, and then we're going to hit calibrate and apply. And we check our velocity. Always check the values later. We got a velocity of 3193. We know the nominal for carbon steel is about 3250, so that's close enough. Remember, that's the velocity in this cal block. Is it the velocity in the steel you're testing? Probably not, but close enough. And the probe zero is 8.7 microseconds. That makes sense for the 73 wedge. Now we'll do an angle calibration. This measures the refracted angle of the sound actually going into the steel. So even though the wedge says it's a 70, it might not be. Now this is really important if you're trying to position flaws in a weld. At lower angles, it doesn't make much of a difference. At high angles, it will because you have such higher sound paths. You're going to take your probe and flip it around the other direction. And now we're going to shoot towards this target here. You see at the top of the block, there's a bunch of angle readings. We're going to move the probe back and forth and peak the signal from that target. It doesn't so much matter what the amplitude is, just that we're in about the right spot here. That's the center of the beam. And then you're going to use that little beam index point mark. And that is why we did it first. And you can see that this wedge lines up with almost perfectly 70 degrees. Now that we're done with the basic calibrations, we would move on to sensitivity cals. Now those are code specific and I will cover those in another video. I've actually already done a video on DAC and TCG that basically tells us how much volume do we add and how large of an indication are we looking for on the screen for that specific code. Now that we're all set up, there's something I want to show you about the song test wave that I think is really cool. This is called the scan plan view. Now in conventional ultrasound, we get used to looking at the A scan. That's fine. We do some trig and we figure out where things are, but it's always nice to have another tool in the toolbox. So if I take my probe here, we're just going to peek the signal from this hole. I'm going to move it back and forth and peek it right around here. And I switch over to the scan plan view. What they've done is they've overlaid the A scan down along the calibrated angle. And if I take this image and overlay it with an actual photo of the IIW block, you can see how useful this would be. 
Speaking of useful, I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And thanks for watching.